good afternoon and welcome. It's such an honor to dedicate this COVID Memorial Garden with each one of you today. My name is Sharon Bowers. I am the perinatal bereavement nurse facilitating the Still Miss program for our Amita South campuses. This year, early spring, as the Still Miss team, volunteer services, and pastoral care were planning this garden, we thought, wouldn't it be beautiful to honor our patients that have died from COVID? We dedicated these two flower beds on either side for both LaGrange and Hinsdale hospitals. Two campuses, one mission, right? During the months of March, April, and May, when the pandemic was at its peak, many patients were alone, not surrounded by family members as they would have been under normal circumstances. Our doctors, our nurses, and our hospital staff showed such compassion to help these patients communicate with their loved ones by phone or through FaceTime. Our hospital staff were like their family, especially when no visitors were allowed. By planting this garden, we wanted to honor the memory of those who fought hard but succumbed to COVID-19. We wanted the families to know that Amita cared and their loved one would not be forgotten, but remembered here in this special garden. One of our Hinsdale fire captains, John Carlson, and his wife, Jill, who is here, their children, Nicholas and Elizabeth, made these 50 wooden crosses. They symbolically represent the fallen at both Hinsdale and LaGrange hospitals. The beautiful stone in front of me and this wind chime here were kindly donated by the Plica family. Debbie Plica is the director of our volunteer program here at Hinsdale. Our heartfelt prayer is that this garden will be a place that staff, hopefully eventually someday family members, can come here, reflect and honor and remember the precious lives lost to COVID-19. Hopefully you all will be able to hear me with removing my, my mask. Uh, these are part of the new things we have to uh, get accustomed to doing, uh, but it's a blessing to be here uh, with everyone and, and to really celebrate uh, the lives of those who are that we're honoring today and the families. And uh, it's just a, a blessing that we have such a, a beautiful day to do that in. Um, it's a reminder of the beautiful lives that uh, are represented uh, here today. Um, you know, it's a, it's a, we'll never forget uh, the early spring of 2020 that will go down in history books uh, that our kids and grandkids will study and read about. And, um, you know, COVID-19 will, whether we knew someone that was, has passed uh, or uh, we had our own various experiences, we will never forget this in our lifetime. And these lives that are now uh, honored with the crosses, um, the experiences, the stories that we'll hear later uh, from some of our caregivers really speak to uh, um, what we should all hold on to um, is, is the, both the, the good memories of the stories that we had uh, with those loved ones um, or how our lives were changed, how we had to work from home for some time or our kids had to uh, go to remote learning and, and how we had to adjust. Um, these are the things that will we'll hold on to us for sure. But uh, as we gather here this afternoon and just uh, both in, in recognition of, of the lives that were lost, uh, we also have the chance to join together as a family and to celebrate uh, those lives. And I'm reminded of uh, a passage in scripture in Psalms 23 that many of you are likely familiar with, um, but, but it was a reminder that uh, when we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, we don't have to fear. Um, and we know that the Lord is with us uh, and we know that uh, he will comfort us. And as we see these uh, crosses in this garden here on our 
uh, visits to our beautiful uh, healing garden here or peer through a window on our campus, uh, we can, these can be reminders of the comfort that we can have uh, in Jesus through, through these times. And uh, as our, our mission even ex, uh, and challenges us as our, at our organization of extending that healing ministry, we can do that uh, through these uh, memorial type uh, environments and uh, through these capturing videos and sharing those with other uh, uh, patients and families as they enter uh, the walls of our hospital. And so I say thank you for the vision of, of, of celebrating these lives this way to those who put together this, uh, this uh, program. And uh, we're just honored to be able to extend that honor back out to those families who have experienced loss and have this memorial in place. So thank you for the opportunity to uh, both welcome and say a brief word this afternoon. Hello, my name is Miranda. I'm one of the clinical coordinators on Team Medical. And this is Anna. She's one of our floor nurses. Um, I just want to say I'm very proud of the staff that we have on Two Medical. During COVID-19, when it first hit, our staff was, they're just the true definition of what teamwork is. They really came together, pulled together. They had each other's back. And I couldn't be more proud than to work with the nurses that we have in our unit. I'm going to pass it off to Anna so she could go a little more in depth. Thank you. I'm Anna. Um, I'm on Two Medical with Miranda. Um, it was hard in the beginning when April, March hit. It was very hard. The new gown rules changing every day. It was hard adapting to everything, but we got through it. Um, it was an honor to be a part of the COVID team and having the nurses on my side that I did have helping me, you know, get meds for me in the room when I couldn't come back out to preserve PPE. So that was also very hard. Um, the support I received was amazing. Um, during all those hard months and even now it's you know still ongoing um what i just remember and my best memories are you know getting that plasma to the patients they're indecivere that's helping them so much and discharging them the covid recovery was such a touching moment um, i cried every time <laughs> so that was really touching that was great for our patients our patients really enjoyed it too that were discharged positive and recovered at home um, at their own time. That's it. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Dr. Fortman, one of the medical staff. And COVID has definitely touched, I think, all of our lives here in many ways. I remember back in the spring when COVID was at its height that um, each day in case management, we'd review the cases. And there was one young mother, um, Spanish speaking here, just delivered a baby. She had COVID and was gravely, gravely ill. And every day we'd look at the case, we'd see what's going on, see how we could support her. Miraculously, she did go home after about a month. We every day prayed, hoped that everything would be okay. And with the help of our chaplains, the case management department got together a small fund just to get the baby started in life. It was difficult. It was just heart-wrenching. Just last week, I had one of my own patients of about 25 years, I see the whole family who passed away of COVID. Just two days ago, my own son in college has just been diagnosed with COVID. He's doing okay, but it touches our lives and it hurts our hearts. And so every day when I put my mask on to go out the door and work, I remember I'm doing this for everybody, not myself. We're protecting each other and we're holding each other's hand by doing our little part and being safe and being cautious and saying our prayers and just being thankful for the days we have. I wasn't planning to share a story today. 
Uh, I wanted to prioritize the rest of our clinical staff. But I would like to share um, uh, one of the stories uh, that uh, I experienced while being on call uh, for the ED. And um, I, again, you know, I'm a dedicated uh, full-time chaplain for this campus, but my ministry extends to all of our other four campuses. And so at one time, I was called to go into the ED over in Glen Oaks. And this was towards the beginning of the pandemic. I had uh, very little experience visiting with uh, COVID patients at the time. But the ED manager told me that the patient uh, who was a PUI patient over in the, the ED, that she, um, was ha she had 24 to 48 hours before she would code. Um, and that uh, the family wasn't allowed to go see her because of her um, PUI status. So I went there and uh, visited with the patient. Very loud uh, negative pressure room so nothing could be heard. But uh, what really happened was I had to improvise uh, and uh, I just used my phone to FaceTime with the family and you know, let the family see their loved one. And I had placed the screen right in front of her eyes. Uh, we had a prayer together. We had a blessing for her. And after the nurse and I left the room, 10 minutes later, uh, the ED manager gave me a call and said that she had already coded. She was deemed not oriented, but apparently she was more oriented than we thought. And she knew that this was her son saying goodbye. And peaceful was the word that the manager used. And I'm just so thankful that as staff um, and as, spirit, as the spiritual care department and staff work together, we're able to give all of our patients who will code a dignified end, a peaceful end one without pain, one without suffering. And it's towards those ends that part of my ministry um, is given here at this campus. At this time, if there's no other stories uh, on the floor, I'd like to invite us to take a brief moment of sacred silence to remember those lives who've been lost by this novel virus. <laughs> 